Welcome! So today, I'm going to be talking about my accepted RISD portfolio, as well as Parsons, Pratt, SVA, and other regular colleges. So, I applied regular decision, and I submitted 18 pieces, including some sketchbook and like, um, sketch process pieces. And I'm just going to go into my portfolio and kind of talk about what I did as well as for my um, RISD home test, what prompt I chose, and I'll get into that more later on in the video. So RISD has from, well, you should submit from 12 to 20 pieces, and depending on how many pieces that are really really good and like qualified you should send those in rather than just submitting pieces that are just filler pieces I don't think that's smart in um, the sense that all these admissions um, people will be looking at your portfolio and kind of judging you as an artist so you want to make sure you have a best like your best representation of yourself through your work that's um, has high quality really good skill and technique. So my portfolio kind of focused on a wide range of mediums and uses. So for my first piece, it's called Lucky Stars, but I'll leave all of the images of my pieces here. So the first piece is called Lucky Stars. It's 15 by 22 inches. I used watercolor, color pencil, and tape transfers. So what I mean by tape transfers are basically, I used these thick sheets of tape and applied it onto a newspaper, and then I ripped it off and rubbed it under um, running water so that all of the fibers of the paper would rub off, leaving the ink stamps on top of the tape. And then I cut the tape into little tiny strips to still have like the effect that I wanted of the symbols. And I placed that in the background of this piece. So for my description, I wrote, I wanted to integrate both American and Chinese culture into one. I remember in my childhood that paper stars were very prominent in Chinese culture. So for me, I wanted to combine my past with a better understanding of who I am now and my identity. So I focused on paper stars because I remember when I was a child, I would always collect them because they were so cute and I loved them so much. And I made a bunch of them, but I can't seem to find where they are. But anyways, moving on, I wanted to also show some creativity with this piece. I would always, like, I recommend that you show your creativity not so much in terms of like um, being able to execute it perfectly the way that you want, but just enough so that the admissions people are able to see your thought process and how you're able to um, portray yourself as an artist and the way that you're able to kind of like think. So what I did was I used one of the paper stars and it unfolded into a fortune cookie strip and I felt that was a nice play on the fact that both of these items kind of represent fortune and luck. I also alluded to both the American and Chinese flag. Um, the Chinese flag can be seen through the five yellow stars and the American star can be seen through the red, white, and blue stars. So it, it was just a really fun experience kind of like playing around and being able to create this piece and I love it so much. I think the way that I executed it, I was able to get rid of the white space through the um, tape transfers, and I think this piece ended up being quite successful. So, also, you should always remember to at least try to organize your portfolio in the sense that it's strong, and then maybe add some of your weaker pieces, and then go again strong, and up until the end, you also want to have most of your strong pieces towards the ends so that way they will be able to see like your skill set and how you're able to like kind of um, create pieces um, successfully so my next piece is titled me it's 12 by 9 inches 
I used watercolor, ink, and pen. And this self-portrait was done from direct observation through a mirror. And what I wanted to specifically focus on was mark making. And I decided to challenge myself by using pen because it's very important to kind of like not overdo pen because I know that by using pen you're able to like create some really light marks. But you have to be extremely cautious because like it can definitely get really dark extremely quick when you're trying to layer it. So what I did was that I used circular motions with my pen to create like the depth in the skin as well as the folds of my t-shirt and then I also used a brush pen to kind of um, show the texture of the hair and the movement in the hair and what I did with the white background originally this piece had a white background I decided to add a wash of watercolor um, just to make it a little bit more interesting because what you should consider is that Whenever you have a piece with a white background, what is it doing to the piece and how can you improve that? Because a lot of the art colleges um, see blank space as sometimes an excuse for not just completing the piece and it doesn't really add a lot to a piece. So I recommend just doing something simple to fill up the white spaces, that way your pieces become more interesting and shows more use of mediums. My next piece is titled Fortune. It is also 12 by 9 inches. For this I used color pencil, ink, and graphics, um, plastic sheet. And what I mean by the plastic sheet was that it's a sheet of plastic that's transparent and basically what I did was that I used my ink to write these symbols that represent the um, 100 good luck and ways to write foo which represents good luck as well so on the left of this piece I showcased my process and my planning piece and then my on the right side it shows my finished um, completed piece overall and I think I did pretty well in terms of getting the colors really, really saturated um, with the color pencil. Color pencil can be quite frustrating to work with, and I think that it ended up being pretty okay and decent. And so I included it in my portfolio because I thought it was quite strong, but also it shows more of who I am as an artist. Um, for the description I wrote, I was inspired by the idea of fortune and luck in Chinese New Year. The red envelope symbolized good luck and safety, and the symbols on the plastic are from the 100 good luck, which represents the ways to write foo. Um, the jade in Chinese culture represents beauty and goodness, and I wanted to tie all these elements together to represent Chinese New Year. My next piece is titled Leon, and this is a figure drawing of my younger brother, and it's 20 inches by 16 inches. The mediums I used were color pencils and turpentine. Um, originally, I was kind of um, conflicted between choosing white paper or black paper, and I found that white paper, although it does have like a lot of benefits, I did want to challenge myself. Having not used black paper, it was really hard to kind of understand the surface and how it would react with the color pencils. And I realized that a lot of the colors that I had to use weren't necessarily the right colors for skin color. Um, specifically, like, for example, blues, you would have to use a lot of blues to get, like, really, like, depth, like, dark shading. And then also oranges like very very bright oranges I used a lot of those kinds of oranges and yellows to add depth to the skin and what I did I wanted this piece to have kind of a focus specifically on the figure and the texture of the skin so I used the turpentine to wash out like basically everything um, except for the skin because I wanted again to show my mark making and my decisions with how I applied the color pencil to depict my younger brother's um, skin and how it looks so that there was a clear contrast between both smooth and like the textured side of this piece.
My next piece is titled Glitch. It is 30 inches by 22 inches. It's a collage, um, and I use chalk pastel, oil pastel, and acrylic. I don't remember all the other mediums, but I think those were just the main mediums that I had used. Um, so this piece was done from direct observation. I timed myself, basically, for each feature of my face. I had to draw down with the pastels, and, um, day by day I would just consistently work on it to make it more abstract. And I think it turned out really cool in the terms of, like, the newspaper fading away and just the coolness of, like, the palette that I used, it adds a lot more depth into the piece. Um, it's important that you include abstract pieces as well because admissions um, do, like, they want to see, like, a whole variety in terms of your portfolio. You don't want to just include realism or um, just, like, surrealism you want to include pieces that are very abstract and unrecognizable and so this does lean between realism but it's not because it's it's really rough and it's not as refined but it's able to show some kind of abstract qualities to it so i decided to include it because i thought it was good in those aspects um, my next piece is called Withering Blossoms. It is 9 inches by 5 inches, and I used pen and ink for this piece. So, originally this was in my sketchbook, but then I decided to cut it out to make it its own piece. I thought this piece was successful in terms of line um, weight, and just the idea of mark making in general. I used a lot of linear lines to kind of develop the shading, and the folds of each flower and what was really interesting was that when I showed my teacher she said that it looked like a print and I didn't recognize that at first but after looking at it it does look like a print but it gives that illusion when you're just using one color for one piece and I feel like by being able to utilize the negative white space in contrast with this very very bright pink I feel like really allowed this to become that kind of like print like feel and then on top of that the use of mark making really adds a special quality to this piece and I really liked it so I included it as a part of my portfolio. My next piece is called Distortion it's 9 inches by 12 inches and this was a photo I believe in freshman year of my high school um, career and what I decided to do was include this because I feel like it's good to show a wide range of your skills and this being developed from film also shows that I'm not just able to do traditional art but I'm able to do things outside of that and what I felt like was successful about this piece was the level of contrast. Um, there's a clear balance between the darks and the lights and how there's a specific focus on the face and the shadows produced. So I decided to include this because it's important to show a wide variety of your piece pieces and just overall to strengthen your portfolio. My next piece is titled Freak. It's eight and a half by five and a half inches. Um, it is a sketchbook piece. It is made of ink, pen, acrylic gouache, watercolor, and acrylic paint. And originally this was just a portrait. I had no intentions of making it like any abstract piece, but after experimenting with it, it started turning out to look like a clown, so I added these primary colors and made it more bold. Now, when it came down to describing this piece on Slide Room, I just went with, oh, it came from my fear of clowns, and I felt like, oh, this was very important to represent in my portfolio. Although I'm not really scared of clowns anymore, um, I felt like this was a good concept to even bring up because it shows your thinking and it shows your 
process and it shows what you're able to produce in a sketch like form. The next piece I have is called The Freak Show and it's 20 inches by 14 and a half inches. I use watercolor gouache and acrylic gouache for this piece. For this description of this piece, I said that it was based off my previous piece, Freak, in which it further displays my fear of clowns. But in reality, this was a piece created um, during my time in junior year when we had this prompt where we chose a bunch of random numbers and for me I got subjects like baby shoes, um, baby food, cricket, um, rats, and I all had to like combine these things into one composition. So I wanted to create one piece that was really good in terms of telling a story and so for my description I kind of elaborated on the fact that I was scared of clowns and that um, I was being represented as the baby and the main focus because I felt like when I was in one of those shows I felt so um, kind of trapped within that reality and I felt like the, there was madness surrounding me and I felt like I was unable to um, escape that. So this piece was basically just an experimentation um, based off a of prompt which you can include. They recommend that you kind of state that prior but I did not know about that. So my next piece is called Grand Central. It's 14 by 11 and a half inches. I use collage, gesso, oil paint, acrylic, and mixed media. So for my description, I wrote, I wanted to represent time and how it plays a major role for New Yorkers. I found that during my trip to New York, Grand Central's atmosphere was very electric. Um, Grand Central's character and functions revolve around time. I wanted to capture this aspect of time and how it unites the people of New York. <coughs> so I kind of wanted to show more abstract pieces because I know that um, I knew that my portfolio was lacking in that. So for this piece, I wanted to really show the motif of time, as well as um, I used the topography of just the numbers on the t Grand Central clock and I made sure that it was able to unify the idea of time and people and their relationship with the hand going up towards the 12 and the little clocks surrounding that. I felt like there was a clear emphasis on time, but you were also able to tell that it was Grand Central because of the colors, the green and the yellow. So I thought this piece was really successful in terms of just using a whole variety of mediums to create a piece and you should totally just challenge yourself to make something that you don't think you would ever make because originally when I made this I did not think that I was even able to get to this point and so I feel that you should always try to expand your technique and your skills so that you're able to impress the admissions people that are reviewing your portfolio. Um, my next piece kind of like takes a really um, large turn from most of my pieces which are more more 2D and so my next piece is a sketchbook. I called it sketchbook because what else am I supposed to call it? Um, when it's closed it's 9 inches by 6 inches and with a width of like 1 inch I believe and what I used was collage, acrylic paint, pen, and acrylic gouache. So that was for the covers and the back cover because what I wrote in my description was that I wanted to make a sketchbook that shows my ability to experiment. So I used a variety of different papers and different mediums for each like section or booklet within the whole sketchbook. And when I used up the sketchbook, I was able to get a better understanding of what it means to experiment and express yourself in a different way. So when I was done with the sketchbook, I 
um, change the cover and change the back cover to fit that idea that I was fully um, understanding of the idea of experimentation and how far it has gotten me in terms of my process and how I make my pieces. So my next piece was a prompt given in school. It's called Woven Giraffe. It's 17 inches by 12 inches and the completed piece is of pencil and acrylic. So on the left side it was um, really hard to kind of like understand how to go about making a woven texture. So on the left side of this um, piece I showcased my process and my thinking and how I went about doing the pattern for the giraffe. And then on the right side, I showed the whole giraffe and like the completed piece where I really honed in on my skills to make sure that the woven texture was really clear and that I used fraying to make sure that it adds more emphasis to the spots on the giraffe as well as the ears. I just wanted to make sure that this piece was really different and using the woven texture, how can I manipulate that so it makes my piece stand out more. And so I just made sure that I wasn't doing the same thing um, over and over again with the woven texture. I wanted to change things up by using the fraying to add the texture and add the complexity to this piece. My next piece is just a simple flamingo study in my sketchbook. It's 9 inches by 12 inches. I use gouache, ink, pen, and watercolor. And <coughs> like I said, I really wanted to experiment in my portfolio because um, it shows you as an artist and your process and your um, ideas. So for me, I challenged myself to use an ink pen, an ink brush pen, which I don't typically use because I remember in the past that I didn't really have a fun experience with them. Um, but after trying it out again, I've completely started to love them because of the like nice brush strokes and just the t like textures that I'm able to achieve. And I think it came through most successfully in this piece because of the flamingo's feathers and the texture. I just think it was really a like I was able to really showcase the texture as well as just make it really um, graphic and just pop out. My next piece is titled Figure Drawings. It's nine inches by six inches in my sketchbook. It's of watercolor, pencil, and acrylic paint. Um, I would suggest that you include some figures in your portfolio. You don't necessarily have to include them at all if you don't want to, but that means you have to show more experimentation and um, a better understanding of yourself and your skills. So just make sure that if you don't include figure drawings, which you don't actually at all need, um, you should make sure that your pieces stand out. But if you're going to include figure drawings, make sure that they're rough or like if you want to make them more developed, you can do that um, because art colleges do tend to like them more because of the fact that they're able to see your skills and how you look at the figure and how you're able to kind of like draw that figure down on a piece of paper. And so there's cons, there's pros and cons to doing figures. And I think that as much as you should do it, it's up to you if you want to include that into your portfolio. And then my next piece is just another sketchbook page. Um, it's 9 by 6 inches again. It's watercolor gouache, color pencil, and mixed media. And I made this piece like about um, a couple months back. And this was when I first started experimenting with gouache. And I felt like... It was really fun, and the ex like just the product at the end. It was really interesting because like I don't do pieces that are typically like this, and so I ended up really liking it. So I included it as part of my portfolio. The last three pieces are just still lives. 
I think it's very important to include still lives, whether it's very abstract or very, very rendered. You should make sure that you have some still lives because colleges will understand um, and appreciate the um, skill and how you go about making these still lives because they're very, very important in terms of developing your skills as an artist. So the first still life is a fruit still life and most, well two of my still lives are basically fruit but I really liked making them and they're really different. So this piece is 6 by 6 inches. It's acrylic gouache, gouache and watercolor and for this piece I did this from direct observation and when I was getting into gouache I searched up relatively a lot of gouache artists and I really liked how a lot of them focused on like the um, texture of like the flat brush or the round brush to be able to like um, kind of sh um, showcase and highlight the, the qualities of gouache. So I wanted to kind of showcase that in my piece as well with the textures of the fruit um, and the flat brush that I use. I think this piece became really successful because of just like how I went about creating it and just how different it is from most of my other pieces. My next piece is called Contour Line Still Life and it's 18 inches by 12 inches. It's watercolor and pencil and so what I did was I also did this from direct observation where I used um, a pencil to create a contour line sketch and then from that I added more value with watercolor pencils and I tried to make sure that it was in a cohesive theme and not necessarily clashing against one another so you should make your make sure that the colors that you're using for each piece makes sense and really um, is uniform so that it makes sense and doesn't like clash and become very very confusing so I wanted to create this almost as like a traditional still life but it's very loose and it's very um, delicate and I just really like how I was able to do something with just watercolor pencils because typically I find watercolor pencils quite challenging to work with. So my next piece is called Glass and Reflections. It's 14 inches by 14 inches and it's completely made up with pencil. I took a really long time trying to make this piece because just the process of rendering down a still life like this, it was really, really tough for me. Um, I really, really wanted to end with a bang, so I used this piece because it showed my technical skill the best. And um, when I went to Portfolio Day, it was very interesting how a lot of the reviewers said like there's a lot of depth when... Um, they saw that there was this abstract glass in front of the um, glass, other glass cups and ex other things on the table of this piece. Um, they thought it was really powerful, how they really contrasted one another. And just overall, I felt like this piece was very successful in the sense that it showed that how the composition plays a major role in your pieces, as well as the variation of values that really... Um, kind of make your pieces stronger 